Hello everybody, welcome to game three in this matchup between USA A and Brazil B. Score is currently 1-1, so all tied up, very close games. These two teams seem pretty evenly matched. We'll have to see though as the Brazil team's home map pick is going to be Islands. And this is a really good map for Brazil. Um, I just gotta say, Miguel is an excellent water player. Um, Dogal's a pretty damn good water player too. I know Stark's a good water player. Not so sure about Spring. I think he's mostly a land player. So this is might be a little bit of a tough game for USA, but we'll have to see and find out. Let's introduce the Brazilian team first. We have red, purple, teal, and gray. Red, purple, teal, gray. In the pocket, pos in the flank position, we have Dogal playing as the Vikings. In the pocket position, we have DH playing as the Mongols. In the second pocket position, we have Stark playing as the Japanese. And in the flank position, we have Miguel playing as the Huns. This is our Brazil B team. For the uh, USA team, we have Matthias playing as the Vikings. In the pocket position, we have Spring playing as the Huns, his favorite civilization, of course. We have Influenza playing as the Japanese. And in the flank position, we have Timotheus playing as the Saracen. So we have a little bit different um, Civ pick. It's pretty simple how these civ civilizations work. Saracens are a better late game civilization. They have faster attacking galleys. Um, I believe they attack 20% faster or 25% faster. Doesn't make a huge difference into the late game, I believe. Mongols, a very early civilization. They like to do their damage early. That's only because they get uh, their hunt bonus. So they can click up very early. So they like to do the damage early. Saracens like to do the damage later. I would, you know, this is this is. I mean, these civilizations. It really depends on how you use them. I, I would say overall they're pretty even. But again, just depends on how you how you use them. Now the Mongols is going to be in the pocket position, so we'll see a faster castle from him, faster war galleys perhaps. Timotheus playing as the flank, not the best situation, I must say. Um, you're probably going to want the Saracens as a pocket, although I'm not 100% sure. you got to figure Japanese fishing ships probably want those as the flank. Uh, Vikings you want as the pocket. So yeah, not the best position for him. Let's see how the Saracens do on this right, uh, right flank. And then otherwise, Japanese pockets. Not going to make use out of those um, higher armor fishing ships as the pocket. And uh, out of all these civilizations, the Vikings, of course, is the strongest on AOC. There's just no comparison at all. So let's take a look at where the dock positions will be. We have an aggressive dock position from Dogao. If um, I, I would probably, yeah, I would probably go a little more aggressive, knowing I have the Mongols here. And that's going to be a good dock position. It's good-ish. He's got a single, uh, a single tuna next to his island. So forward dock position for PH, this is also a good dock. And we got two good docks, three good docks. Dock in the back for Stark. And what about Miguel? Hard to see gray on this map. Another good dock position. Mostly kind of in the forward position. So four good good dock positions for the uh, Brazilian team. For the USA team, good dock for uh, Melkor, kind of at the side. Odd dock position, you usually don't want to dock in the rivers. It's okay. It's just as good as uh, Dogao's dock position. But uh, not great. It's only a single deep fish here. Um, this dock's a little bit of a surprise. It's actually not that great. It's a surprise at how not great it is. Because there's only a single fish here. Yeah, this one's okay. So a slight advantage for fish for the Brazilian team. Probably won't make a huge difference. I think Dogao's X and is going to build his other docks, I'm not sure. Uh, oh, okay, he's communicating how his island shape is, I guess? I've never seen that one before. So VH is going to be the first up the next stage. He's the Mongols. Remember, he's the Mongols' flank. I wonder if Dogao's actually going to perform the fast castle here as the flank. Uh, the Mongols' pocket, sorry. And Miguel's up to the next stage. Okay, I'm a little confused. Okay, so Miguel's the flank, um, Timotheus is the flank. What kind of uptime did VH get? He's on 21 pop. He's on 17 bills. Wow. 
That's fast even for Mungles. That is fast. Of course, uh, luring the scout and luring the boar in with the scout helps. That is a crazy fast uptime. But only going to be able to build a single galley from one of these docks. There we go, second galley coming out. Where did you get the gold from? Huh. Either way, uh, Pierre's just going to have a super fast galley rush. I'm checking the uptime of Dogao. Looks like flank uptime. Second dog coming up. Uh, let's go over to Dogao's point of view. I want to see his resources. We'll grab some gold. Certainly not enough for a fast castle, so we're gonna see um, we're gonna see Dogao and Fiage go for feudal rushes. Meanwhile, Influenza is gonna go for the fast castle. So it's up to uh, up to Timotheus to survive for now. He's gonna be two versus one for a good five minutes here at least. Hopefully, he can keep his fishing ships alive and hold out until the war galley upgrade comes in from Influenza, which Influenza has not even clicked up yet. So this is going to be tough. What Fiage wants to do is he wants to find the docks nice and early. And he's even gone straight across the map. Where is he going? Okay, he's going to go for the fish of blue, I think. I think it's a bad idea considering the extra armor on the fishing ships. Um, little... I, I guess Dogao feels like he can take on the Saracens just by himself. He's playing as a Viking, so... Would have been great if uh, Fiat should have just came right over here, taking out the fishing ships. But that's hindsight. And of course, they don't know what, what positions the players are in. He doesn't know he's going towards the Japanese player either. They're not playing as Vietnamese. So Fiat is going to find nothing. And if he doesn't find anything, he's not making use out of his Mongols bonus. You know, three galleys out for Dogao, two out for Timotheus. And Timothy's gonna have to go back, but should have enough to defend. Fiage is gonna sandwich him. There we go. Gonna make use out of that bonus now. Oh my god. Gonna eat my words. Fiage is gonna run right past him, not using patrol. Fiage still exploring on, around on the outside. <laughs> Don't need that. On the right side, looks like no action so far. Four docks coming up from Matthias, though. And Matthias is just uh, going around the bottom side. Can't find these fishing ships of Stark. Looks like uh, Matthias, sorry, Timotheus has enough to defend for now. So there we go. He's going to start to work on these fishing ships. going to take him a while. Can't tell what those markers are for. Finally, after, what, five minutes, VH has found the fishing ships of Influenza. And might take out a few. However, Influenza's probably got all the food he needs from those fishing ships. Let's check his resources. Blue, blue, blue. Yeah, Influenza's already up. So he's gotten the resources he needs from that. Can Timotheus hold, though? He's two versus one. And uh, Dogao, playing as the Vikings, has a lot more galleys out than him. Gonna lose a lot of, lot of, lot of galleys here. And it's not looking so good for the USA team already on the right flank. On the top side, it looks like somehow those galleys got cleaned up. So Stark still has his fish. On the bottom side, it looks like Flu still has his fish, but who knows for how long. And I'm seeing on three fronts the USA team lose. They're losing on the right side, they're losing in the pocket position here, and they're losing on the top flank as well. Not looking very good at all for the USA team. And now Flu can lose even more fishing ships. Stark is up to the next age. It looks like uh, Spring also feudal rushed, because I don't see him up to the next age. What has Spring done this game? I haven't seen him until right now. Look at that micro from Miguel. So he was able to dodge three volleys. And now, now Matthias is going to move out, and Miguel's going to turn right around and win this battle. Melkor, where are you going? Oh, dear God. I think USA just outclassed on the water. 
Alright, finally. Okay, Stark is gonna get War Galley. Stark's the other pocket, remember. And Flu has no galleys left to upgrade, really. I lost most of them. Nice micro from Dogal. Even more galleys coming in from Th. Looking pretty poor from the USA team. Looks like Miguel might be able to take another engagement here. And start going to be able to defend with War Galley. So, this whole time, it looks like Matthias. How many docks does he have? One, two, three, four, five docks? But no fishing ships, and he's going to have to see farms. Which is bad. Alright, so Flu's going to push back on the bottom side. Dogal's going to push in on the right side. And on the top side, looks like Stark pushing out. A lot of galleys for uh, Timotheus and Spring, but without the upgrade, they're really not going to have much of a chance against War Galley. And Spring just clicking up now. You gotta avoid this fight. You gotta avoid this fight. Gonna take too many casualties. And Fia just coming in through the back. Might be worth it to wait here. Let's see how this timing is. Might not be worth it to wait, I don't know. It's amazing how they're all communicating this. Actually, he's gonna go for the villager kill. He's not gonna get it. Bear in mind, none of the players have cartography. I think PH is only researching it now. And let's see how this timing is. Is this going to be a big uh, big mistake for Fiege? He's going to lose one galley right away. It looks like it's going to be a big mistake. He's going to lose two galleys right away. Three galleys, four galleys. And there's only three galleys left to add to this mix. So, so far, the Mongols definitely doing a great job in this matchup compared to the Saracens. Uh, it's just the way the Brazil team... Um, how to shake out this game. Now, Fiege already has cartography. Let's take a look at his point of view. There we go. So this is what Fiege sees. He can see what's going on in the bottom side. He can see that his teammate Dogan pretty much has it. Although, might need a little support with Fluke here. And he's just got two galleys here just to... Maybe you want to put him on guard or something. So you don't have to worry about them. But it's amazing how much of the map VH is actually scattered at the stage, although perhaps unintentionally. And there we go, there's VH's uptime. So, so far, 600 score, uh, score difference, Brazil in, in, the, in the lead. Yeah, what did I just say? Being left alone. And Castle Age, Castle Age from Melkor and Dogal. Timotheus, Timotheus, remember he had a sea farm, so he didn't have any fishing ships. He's still in the Feudal Age. In fact, he's going to be the last player into the Feudal Age, and that might be enough to collapse the right flank. I don't see galleys out either for Timotheus. So there's really nothing going for him right now. Let's check out the top side's doing. Spring! Big army! Pretty big army. Not enough to take on two players, though. So Matthias is going to be up. Matthias, not so big army. Matthias, 14 ships. Um, that's not going to be enough, I feel, to take on this army. It's close, but it's not enough. And finally, the right side's actually collapsing now. With a combined force of Fiege and Dogao. It's just against Flu. I mean, Timotheus has nothing to offer here. Two on one, gonna take that all day. It's This is gonna be a, a tough game for Timotheus if he loses the water. A lot of his woods, some of his golds too, are exposed. And Dogao, as soon as he's gonna win that fight, just gonna, gonna capitalize on it. 
Yeah. You don't need that many galleys, though. I mean, he doesn't know how many galleys Timotheus has, which is currently one. So, just gonna do a little bit of a drive-by. You can always turn around to fight this army if you wanted to. Here's the big fight on the top side. Let's see who has more. War Galley coming in at precisely the right time. Imperial Age for Stark already. We haven't talked a lot about Stark this game. And I think this is this is gonna be I think this is gonna be the last major fight in this game. I really do. Or is it? It's so hard to tell. They stack up on top of each other. Big fight going on on the bottom side as well. I'm pretty sure that the Brazilian team has it on the bottom. On the top... Alright, more galleys coming in. Neither player wants to back down. They're going to take some damage if they, uh, if they back down. Karini coming in from start. That's a nice upgrade. Looks like Flu might actually have enough, but it doesn't matter. It's going to be GG. On, oh, on the top side, definitely the Brazil team having that. So GG. Just We saw in three different places the USA team collapse, and the strength of the Mongols as well. So I hope you enjoyed this game. We should be going on to game four now. Right now it's 2-1 for the Brazilian team. And if you like this game, please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.